uh, they only uh, have one mate. And uh, this is a Japanese wedding coat. It's called an uchikake. And uh, they're worn uh, over a bridal kimono. And this particular one is a wedding coat. And uh, the coat is to be worn over uh, layers of bridal kimonos and to drag the floor. It has a beautiful kind of a padded bottom on the bottom and it's just meant to be open. It's never belted or tied or anything. It just hangs over the top of the under kimonos. But um, talking about the Japanese red crown crane, they used to be endangered, but now there are about a thousand of them and they migrate to Hokkaido, Japan. And so I uh, tried to find out what is a special thing in Japan in the month of February and it came up the Japanese red crown crane and you see uh, several farmers in Japan have now uh, helped these cranes to uh, you know have a nice place to stay they might help to feed them and then photographers come with their big long lenses and take beautiful pictures of them doing their crane ballet or their snow ballet when they mate and you can see a picture of the of the couple there uh, it, they're just beautiful, and it's, it's a beautiful dance, it's a beautiful um, bird, and these birds stand about five feet tall, mm -hmm. so well, they are oh impressive uh, in their stature, and not too many other animals will bother, you know, will bother them because of their, their pure size and scale. Uh, the other thing yeah. that is uh, uh, about cranes is origami cranes, and you've probably heard about uh, folding Japanese cranes out of paper. Well, the story there's a story about a girl, um, uh, Sadako Sasaki, who had leukemia from the atomic bombing, and uh, her friends tried to encourage her and so and her family and said, uh, just tie a thousand cranes, and then it'll encourage you to have good health and and longevity, and so. She, she went and folded the cranes. Now, there, was, there is someone who wrote a book uh, about this girl, and in the book it says that she never finished folding the cranes and that her family finished the cranes, but I read more and more online, and the brother says, no, no, she folded over 1,400 cranes and, uh, before she passed, and they used the cranes that she folded uh, to take them to places like 9-11 to New York City and present one of her cranes as a symbol of oh peace uh, to the museum there. So this is a very heartfelt thing. And um, anyway, so you, you will string, you'll see strings of uh, the cranes, a thousand cranes, and when they're all strung together, they maybe don't look like a crane, but I even had a student who came and she, uh, uh, folded all of these cranes. So uh, if you want to come and pick up a crane, paper crane, she made these for people to take. I also just picked up other artifacts that I have that are cranes, crane related, a crane on a lacquered uh, plate from Kyoto. This is a Tamari ball. It's a string ball. It's uh, embroidered on the top with a red crown crane. And uh, to, to stand them up, I just use a sake cup to, st to stand them up. But Sandy, are you good catching? I'm gonna throw that to you. Okay, so uh, just, no, 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 just take a look at it and then pass it around. Yeah, and then the other cranes that I have here, uh, one of my students, uh, Eiko, she brought these beautiful, this is Mizuhiki. Mizuhiki is a cord, it's paper covered, and it's an art form in Japan. Uh, and actually, I took it out of this book. There, I, I brought a picture of one, but she wow. actually brought the cranes that were folded from her wedding. Uh, and she said, I have um, like 50 or 60 of these. Like all the guests would, would bring an envelope with money in it, and then this, this crane would be on the outside of it. So she says, you can keep these. Mm. So she gifted me these beautiful cranes uh, that are folded out of uh, paper. Then these are the uh, cranes, but these are to look like a uh, origami crane, but they are a chopstick rest. It's made out of pottery. Mm -hmm. It's a chopstick rest. And what else? And then Susie, I'm gonna have you talk about yours, if you don't mind. Well, I, it, I got it on my trip, and yes. it was it's for the new year, so right. I believe it gives you well good wishes for the new year, right. and it is the year of the boar. It is. And the yes. crane is so busy that you don't, but he's right on the front there. Right at the top, the boar. No, the, no crane. the crane. I see the crane. Oh no, I see the crane. Yeah, and oh, yeah, it yeah. does have the. 
No, it doesn't have a little. Yeah, it does have a little red head oh, yes. right there. He's got the red yeah. head. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So it is a Japanese red yeah. crown crane. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Susie. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that. Isn't it lovely? Mm -hmm. I found out that beautiful. the Japanese get a new one every year. And at a certain time of the year, after a certain part of January, they are to take them down off the door and burn them. Ooh. And then it, it promotes buying a new one the next year. <laughs> well, I have it on my front door on New Year's Day. Of course, yes. I didn't realize that their New Year's is a different New Year's than ours yeah. at first. Yes. But the humidity right. got to it and curled, oh, it the curled all the so I brought it in. Oh, yes. I right. don't want to burn. No, you don't have to burn it. No, no it's okay. We, we're not going to burn it. So it hangs in my kitchen now. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you for bringing that because that's just beautiful. But you can see how the crane is so um, important in Japanese culture and how beautiful they are. What a beautiful bird uh, representing marriage and uh, long life together. So, um, yeah. Anyway, any questions? Oh. Paper? oh, this is Japanese washi paper, and again, it has the Japanese red crown crane featured on the paper. So this is made out of mulberry paper, which is the paper that is called washi paper. Washi paper? W-A-S-H-I, washi paper, yeah. And made out of mulberry pulp, and printed with beautiful patterns. Now, they of, use that for lining shelves and things like that, or? Uh, I would say purpose. you cover a box with it, that you could do art with it. Well. Uh, it's it's more expensive paper. That, I mean, you could fold with origami with it, but it's you know more pricey than just you know <laughs> printed origami. I mean, this is gold printed and it's nice. <laughs> so I'm honoring the red crown uh, Japanese crane, a beautiful bird in the winter, um, and a Japanese heritage bird. Um, we're going to make one out of um, foliage today. We're going to use the flax and tie it in a knot. And the knot is going to make his head, and the backward side of the leaf will make his little beak. Now mine just happened to split on the end, which actually made it look like he was speaking <laughs> or calling. So that's a great thing. And then you'll want to tie another one, a smaller one, in your set, and that'll be the female. And they're doing their, their mating dance there in Hokkaido. So uh, we, we're actually using this month a piece of uh, washi paper, and I just cut a circle about the size of, uh, say, a quarter, little bigger than a quarter. And I think I used a medicine bottle cap as a as a guide, and I just made all these little circles. And you're going to take two out of a bag, a matching pair, and you're going to fold it in half, and you're going to tape it on the top of their head, and that makes for their red crown on the top of the crane. Then you're going to wire, and I'm going to demo that but you're going to wire the um, side that's closest to their body and that's so that we can get some height or bend or uh, we can manipulate the foliage so that we have a higher one above the man's head and then we have one slightly lower. Then we have the female and we have one higher and one lower and it just looks like they're, they're flapping their wings and they're doing their dance but we split the opposite side of the leaf and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to do that. So this all represents tie or the heaven line. This uh, bird represents the man. In this case it actually represents the woman. And then all of the white flowers represent a uh, fuku or the earth. So we have tie, we have yo and we have fuku. So this is all the snow that they're dancing in in Hokkaido. And um, we have white cushion mums. Be sure to take off all the foliage off of the uh, stems, and uh, you'll want to cut out the head of the mum. You, the mums are so voluptuous and full, we don't need to use them all. So just take both of your stems and cut out the, the tip of, of it and use it, uh, one in the front and one in the back, and then fill in with the baby's breath. Not too full, kind of looks so that you can see this. It looks like snowflakes kind of falling to the ground and it can be lower than the mums, all right? So, and, and you, if you have a, a large open bowl, you can make it so it looks more like the pond or the water. The black actually represents their beautiful black-tipped wings of the, of the crane. Okay, now let's go over and we're going to, on the demo day. All right, so, what we're doing today is we're going to make the, use the flax 
And the front of the flax, you want to keep the front, but what you're going to do is you're going to tie it with the front kind of always facing you and then pull the little tip and there you have a crane with a beak. Pretty easy, right? Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Oh, can I have someone uh, just grab me a scissors off of the table because I'm going to cut this at the bottom here. So because these knots, oh thank you, these knots here uh, tend to uh, slide out, um, to keep them from, from sliding out, what we're going to do is after you get your head in position, you want to press the leaf so that it doesn't slip. But also I found they still slip. <laughs> so just take a little piece of tape, about two or three inches long, roll it into a roll so you have a double-sided piece of tape, uh, kind of open up his head a little bit, do a little surgery there, and just roll in that tape and then press it so that uh, it will stay in place, okay? Then I've already cut, as I, as I mentioned to you before, the red uh, washi paper. So I'm going to take a piece here, I'm going to fold it into half, press it so that you have a half, so you can see where the half is. Then you're going to take, we're going to use a lot of scotch tape today. Uh, you're going to take a tape, you're going to roll a small, a small piece and you're going to put a small piece on both sides of the half of the circle and then you're simply going to press it onto his little head like and find where the half is like so and just use your finger and press it and now he's a red crowned crane <laughs> okay Beautiful. now the flax leaves uh, are all, they all come already cut at an angle, a steep angle. They won't stay in your Kenzon that way. So what you want to do is uh, once you have your largest, biggest stem, uh, you just want to cut a straight cut. And that way you'll be able to pierce the Kenzon and make the bird stay where you want it to be. Now, you want to make one going one direction and one going the other direction. I did a drawing and in my drawing I have to say I they look angry, one's facing one way and one's facing the other way, but don't worry about that. Um, let's see, I wanna make it go the other way. So, so to do that, you just, you just put your knot going the other direction. So I'm gonna fold it this way, and now she is facing him. Oh, she has a lot to say, too, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so there she is. Oh, there she is. And what you wanna do is make her, her beak should kind of touch like the bottom of, of his chin, right? So, so they're kind of lovingly chatting together. And then you're gonna cut that straight across and that's going to give you your red crown man crane and female crane, okay? Then to make the leaves, uh, the aspidistra leaves tend to be rather dirty. So uh, very carefully take a towel and uh, I don't have one right here, but just take a towel and wipe uh, off the leaf and, oh, thank you, thank you, Sandy. So we're just gonna wipe off the leaf. If it's that dirty and you need to wet your towel, wet your towel and then be sure to dry it carefully because the next thing we're gonna do is use tape on it and we have to make sure the tape will, will stick. So be sure to dry it completely and clean it off. Now, uh, aspidistra leaves don't always have the main vein right in the center. Can you see it's off-center? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the, the, this is a wide, broad side, and this is a narrow side here. And so what I want you to do is take your four, because you'll have two wings for each bird. I want you to analyze your wings. You'll each have an extra wing. If you haven't done this technique before, I'm giving you an extra leaf so that you can practice splitting the one side of the wing. So we're only going to split a half of the wing and the other half is going to be the stability to keep the wing in place, and that's the side we're gonna put the wire. It doesn't mean that your wire side will always be on the wide side for you to make more slits or more wing. Does that make sense? Um, all of your pieces may, you may have all going the same direction. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you, let's suppose, let's just suppose that um, all of mine go this one direction and I, I have to do my wire on the wide side and only slit the narrow side. 
So I'm going to use a um, floral wire. I'm going to bend it in a, like a little shepherd's hook at the top. This is so we don't have to cut uh, wire with our scissors. Please never, never, never <laughs> cut wire with your cutters, your flower cutters, or your scissors because you'll damage the, the blade. Um, we don't even have to cut it. We're just going to bend it. And we're going to use the scotch tape and we're going to wire about 3 eighths to a half an inch away from the rib. And I can see the rib is right here. Once you identify where the rib is, be sure to keep the wire uh, away from the rib by about between uh, 3 eighths and a half an inch. And then just press it gently but firmly uh, against the wire like so. You don't want to press down too hard with your nails or you will crimp the veins where it hydrates, takes up the hydration. So you just want to do it enough to hold your tape in place. Then at the end you're going to do the same thing you did up at the top and you're just going to curve it and hold it down and then grab your tape and tape right over the top of the wire so that it will give you some stability and some support. Okay, so now I've taped it in uh, four or five different spots along the side and now I'm going to split the opposite side. So I've wired the wide side. Now I'm going to take where, the, where I know the vein is right in here and I'm going to measure eyeball up about three-fourths of the way up. I'm going to split it about three-eighths of an inch away and then split it up until it gets to be almost an inch to the tip to the edge. Then I'm going to split it all the way down a little past where it touches the vein. You can still pull it down there. Then I'm going to go about three quarters of the way down again and move over my thumb and split it again. And now I'm just going to, it'll tear all on its own. You don't need a scissors to do it, you just split it with your fingernail. Hmm. And then let it do its thing. It'll go where it wants to go. And then the last piece I have, I'm going to split this one in half like that. Again, you want to keep your upper cuts that are up here kind of in the same angle as the edge of the leaf. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to split it all the way down to the vein like that. And so when you turn it, you have a wing. Hmm. So is it preferable to be splitting the skinny side? You said you're going no. to have to split either side. Right, and most both. people would prefer to split the wide side, side because yeah. you get more slits yeah. and it looks more uh, graceful or uh, you have more lines to, mm -hmm. to, to go, you know, to, like little wings, mm -hmm. you have more wings. Don't let that be a deterrent to you. <laughs> so another, what I'm saying is, no, either side is fine to split. You can split either side. But uh, if, you, if all of your leaves are exactly like this, you have to do the opposite. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you're going to place this in your design with your taller piece, your man, up here, and you're going to place your, uh, your wing slightly higher than his head. All right? And then, so I'm going to cut it off, like right here. Then the next wing I make, I'm going to make it just maybe to here, so that these are different levels, even okay. though they're supposed to be his wings. Mm -hmm. on both sides. They won't be exactly across because what we don't want is bunny ears or antlers. We, we really want them to be wings and look kind of graceful. So we'll do the same thing to the female and we'll make two wings for her but we'll make them shorter and smaller. They'll still be above her head but it'll be shorter and you may have to cut it, maybe cut the whole stem off and then put it in like that. Then the last thing you put in are your um, mums and your baby's breath. Okay? Any questions? Oh, that's how that's on there. So this was one of my students, Becky. She got this from um, everything but the house. And evidently this newspaper is from 1953, July of 1953. But, but the other students agreed that this was uh, definitely an item that was much, much older than 1953. Put your left and then this is the lid. All right, for oh, maybe that's a tray. Sorry, I think that's the tray. Mm -hmm. And then this comes out with some more little trays. It's all it's it's really a picnic box, is what it is. 
And actually these handles, I was told, they would put a square piece of wood in here, and so two people, one can hold it on one side and one on the other, and you go out to your picnic, and this is your picnic box. So this is an antique Japanese picnic box, okay? And then inside of this and the other box are all of the beautiful oh my bowls. They said it's uh, well used. Now they said one was a sake cup, one was probably for soup, they said. I still don't know how they carry soup but in there, but that's why I guess you have the handle so it doesn't tip. <laughs> but I thought some of these were pickle bowls, and they said, no, it's, it's for sake drinking. Mm -hmm. So your rice wine, and in the summertime, I guess you just pour it out when it's hot. You drink it cold. You want it cold. Wow, it's a lot in there. I know, it just keeps going, right? Oh, and this, this, this I thought this was a lid for, there's two lids here for the bowls, maybe for the rice bowls. What's it made out of? Uh, it's lacquered. Stuff. It's lacquered. And wood. Putting the bowls. Mm -hmm. They're, yeah. It's all lacquered. Yeah. yeah. It's all lacquerware. It's beautiful. So that would be wood that's lacquered? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like many layers of lacquer. Yeah, it's lovely. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, it's very old, and they didn't know how old it would be, but definitely the newspaper that was in there was from '53. But they said, "Oh no, it's much older than that." So we're gonna we're gonna slim this down a little bit so it's not so full. Ah, I've already slimmed it. Well, let's slim it some more. Let's trim it down a little bit more. Yeah, my arrangement right. is kind of diminutive. They're it's small. Okay. They're short people. They're short people. They're big cranes. Okay. They're young cranes. They're only yearlings. <laughs> They're still interested in each other. It's their first <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Here we go.